So happy to have you along. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a James Beard Award nominee. The group includes Roosty Co., two locations in Alexandria and Boston. Just opened GBD, which stands for Golden Brown Delicious in DuPont Circle. That's right. Hope things are going well there. Greg, thanks, as always, for joining us. Thank you. Oh, happy day for some of you. What do we have on tap this <laughs> so week? So I figured it, we, we had to do this beer um, to, for, for, I don't know, like a thousand reasons. It's, um, if you like the show Game of Thrones, um, you've probably heard about this beer and you've probably drank it. Which the most popular beer in the seven, in the seven, seven kingdoms, kingdoms. <laughs> of Westeros. The, uh, um, we're both big fans, which is cool. But yeah. um, we were talking a little bit before this uh, about it, and, you know, it, it's true and it's something we need to talk about. I mean, this is a very intriguing, interesting, one-of-a-kind marketing move um, by Omegang here. Because, like you were saying, if you like this, that show, you love it. There's no, like, in-between on it. Right, so, yeah, you, you no, know, you just, you're passionate about it. And so you're obviously going to at least get a bottle of this to drink with it. And, you know, I think we're about two or three episodes deep into the third season. This beer, which is the first in a series, um, from what I understand, from... Omegang and HBO of collaborations around Game of Thrones. It's called Iron Throne. So it's supposed to be specific to season three and what's happened up until now and what's going on right now. I think that's, uh, you know, one of the reasons that they chose to make a blonde uh, beer because of who's ruling uh, currently uh, in the show. But um, mm. this is one of three, and, um, and we'll see what else comes out from them. And 6.5% blonde ale, just a standard uh, Belgian blonde. It is um, just a classic Belgian blonde, actually. It's spiced with a little bit of lemon peel and grains of paradise. Um, it's got a semi-dry finish and really cool. And to my knowledge, I think this is the first time Omegang has made a kind of classic blonde ale. You know, we think of Belgian blonde, you think of like left blonde and things like that. I think this might be the first just straight up blonde that they've made. So. It'd be interesting to know, too, and maybe someone could email in and let us know, and maybe you know, if there's ever been a beer named an association with a TV show. I mean, Laverne and Shirley Dunkel. Or, I mean, I, I'm dating myself slightly there. Uh, I, that's a... It's a great question. I mean, and you toe the line. It's real nice. It's good. It's clean. It's refreshing. It's not overpowering. Good right, pricing on it. It's, it's, a, it's an affordable 750 for sure if you see it out there. Um, uh, and, you know, just a, a, a crowd pleaser. I think, you know, and that's... A, if you're going to... Collaborate on a beer for a, a, a very a nationally, internationally renowned show. It's probably not going to be a smoke beer, you know, or something like that. It's going to be something that's a little bit approachable, but still very flavorful. Um, finish is semi-dry. Uh, there's a little bit, you know, they've got like continental hopping here. Styrian Goldings gives it a little bit of an earthy note. Uh, some Hallertau Spalt qualities, like herbal, floral, Germany, um, but. You know, it's kind of a, a bright, refreshing beer. And, and right here at the bottom of the label, HBO. So, I mean, obviously you don't take a, a show and slap its name on your beer. Yeah. They either approached HBO or the other way around about, about getting together. And uh, it's cool that HBO was willing to do that. Uh, yeah, I think so. And I, I'm interested to see what the response is to this. You know, you think about craft beer, and for better or for worse, a lot, most people in craft beer have kind of built it up to be this anti-establishment, um, you know, beyond marketing, which we've spoken about before, it's, like, it's completely false. I mean, craft brewers have labeled glassware. They, you know what I mean? Like, they care about their image. It's still business. There's still a marketing component. But be that as it may, there's been this kind of, well, we don't do it that way, you know, this kind of macro way. And I'd be interested to see how people, what people think about it. And I think Omegon was smart with it because they chose a, a, a hip, cool kind of, you know, it's, you know, a cool hip show, um, where obviously lots of ale is consumed on the show, and you know there's a lot of things to, to go along. With that. And a lot of craft brewers may not strike out in this profession to become multi-millionaires. I suppose some do, but you've got to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah. The exactly. the lights don't come on magically. The grain and the hops don't arrive at your brewery right, yeah. all by it themselves. It is business first. So, it's business first. Uh, it you is. know, you got to stay alive. And this is a delicious beer. You know, that's the cool thing. It's not like in the old days. You know, a lot of macro brewers used to, um, and still do actually, if you think about it. I mean, there's t I just this dawned on me just now. I mean, the opposite of this is taking a pre-existing beer that may not be the most exciting flavorfully uh, and slap on your local sports team right. on the oh, yeah, on, on, on the bottle. You know, time. so yeah. so I mean, this is a whole new way of of crossover 
um, marketing and collaboration, you know? Um, and, and, you know, again, judge it by the liquid, I think. That's it. What I love about the show is someone's always asking someone else to bring him some ale. Uh, and uh, often in the morning, and as you talked about last week with the Whit beer, with the Blue Jacket Whit beer, a great breakfast beer. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, for centuries, beer was consumed from sun up morning, to sundown. Night. Yeah, because I mean, well, the water sources were unclean. Um, beer, because of its boiling and its additives of, of gruet herbs and spices, later hops, alcohol in the beer, made it uh, much safer um, for for you know hydration. Um, and it's interesting too because. Uh, you know, well, first off, talking about food, we are just about into the beginning of steam crab season. Yep. Up in yep. Uh, Maryland and yep. Baltimore. Um, so they're a little this behind is, this year. I just read they, in the really? Baltimore Sun because the te the bay hasn't gotten warm enough, but soon it enough it has been cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're almost there. This is that kind of beer. I mean, this to me and steam crab is great. It's a little bit dry. It's got that grains of paradise spice quality. It seasons the the crabs themselves. So this is something I think about. Uh, for that roast chicken, obviously anything herbal. It's a little bigger than the wit beer that we were talking about before. Um, it's a it's fant a fantastic with that. And then as far as history goes, you know, there's been some cool talk about this beer and like, you know, is it like the beers that would have happened during the show? So the show is obviously fantasy and created, but it's most people think it's inspired by the War of the Roses, which was a 15th century uh, English you know, battle for the throne. Okay. Um, so in the 15th century, as we've talked about before, beer certainly never would have been this color. Um, it would have been at least a really deep, 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 dark, golden, likely tawny amber brown because of direct kilning methods on the grain. Um, at that time, hops had started to come into English beer for sure, but they might not have been overarching. So it would be likely you'd see some additional seasonings, probably not the more modern culinary lemon and grains of paradise, but probably something more medicinal, strange, uh, and herbaceous and bitter, like bog myrtle or yarrow or something like that. And the other thing about Games of Thrones that's, that's really interesting is that you see the class divide. Um, lots of ale is consumed, but even more wine really is consumed. You know, you think of all of the the upper echelon of all of the of, of most of the families are drinking wine over ale just because it's more expensive, it's scarcer, and more prized. As with many things in time and history, it would be fascinating to be able to bring someone from the 15th century, the era of the War of the Roses, yeah. here to have them try some modern day yeah. beers and well, see all, what they would think. They wouldn't be drinking it out of a glass because that yeah. didn't exist. Um, you know, they started to come in like 16th, 17th century, um, but still then expensive and only for the, the, the wealthy. Only in the 19th century of the Industrial Revolution did glassware become available to the masses. So in those days too, they're drinking out of you know, horns, auric horns, which you see in the show. Yeah. They're drinking out of um, uh, leather, um, kind of almost look like basket cups, clay, things like that. One of my coworkers at the radio station who works uh, at, at our website, WTOP.com, I walked by her cube the other day, and she's got a big sword next to her leaned up. Well, this was the week before the premiere of the third season of Game of Thrones. She was having a Game of Thrones-themed party to watch the show, which I'm sure beer. I'm going to tell her about. I'm sure <laughs> many people have had, uh, and uh, I'm sure some people have gone so far as to have horns of ale at their uh, Game of Thrones party. But also, and it I, happens every weekend somewhere in America with Renaissance fairs. It's, so it's, it's kind of piggybacking on that. And, and Greg and I would personally like to invite Peter Dinklage to come to Church Key and uh, sit in with us for an, for an episode that of That would be awesome. Beer that would be great. We're, we're buying. <laughs> yeah. So if you've got a question for Greg, about uh, uh, beer or Game of Thrones, uh, email us at beeroftheweek at wtop.com. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly, and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.